Hello and welcome to the How to Survive podcast. My name is Chris and with me, as ever, is Joe, our general handyman. Bună ziua. He's really ugly, isn't he? Don't be afraid to say so. Can't understand you anyway. He only speaks Romanian. You see that gorgeous smile? He's felt very handsome ever since he got those false teeth. Bună ziua. <laughs> this week's film on episode 172A mm. is... Dario Argento's Suspiria. Now, if you're a fan of Luca Guadagnino's Suspiria, then don't worry. <laughs> because later today, mm. 172B of the How to Survive podcast will be out, which is about Luca Guadagnino's Suspiria. Yeah. So that's fine. Because what we need to do more than anything is record more episodes of the podcast than would normally be necessary. Yes, exactly. And with that in mind, Suspiria. If you haven't seen Suspiria, you've had 41 years in which to put that right uh, before you listen to this podcast, because the How to Survive podcast, as ever, is full of spoilers. And we wouldn't want to ruin what is considered a classic yeah. of the horror genre for you. We, we couldn't wait another 41 years. <laughs> No, in a very real sense, we could not. So this is your last chance before we head on with the plot recap and then on to our usual chat after this. Roses are red, violets are blue But the iris is the flower that will mean the end of You can hide from Suspiria. Suspiria. But you cannot escape. Suspiria. The only thing more terrifying than the last 12 minutes of Suspiria are the first 92. Susie Banyan arrives in Munich to begin studying at the Tanz Dance Academy, a prestigious German ballet school which has stood since the early 1900s. Upon arrival, she sees Pat, another student, fleeing the school and running away through the woods. We see Pat arrive at a friend's house and confess that she has learned a terrible secret about her ballet school and shortly thereafter she is dragged through the window onto the building's roof where she is stabbed repeatedly. Her friend runs through the building's lobby to get help just in time to see Pat's body thrown through the glass ceiling, shards from which impale Pat's friend, killing her too. So this is where I got confused. I thought that happened in the school. No, it's in a, in a somewhere room. else. Yes. Susie starts at the school the following day and is introduced to a host of characters, including the school's matriarch, Madame Blanc, and her dance instructor, Miss Tanner. At her first rehearsal, Susie quickly falls ill and collapses and is thereafter made to board at the school and given a strictly controlled diet, including a nightly glass of red wine brought to her by the school's servant, Pavlo. Buona <laughs> Susie, be Susie befriends her neighbour Sarah. One night, maggots begin raining down from the ceiling, Sarah ostensibly caused by a crate of rotting food in the loft, and so the students sleep in the dance floor. It's not, uh, yeah, yes, yes, that's okay. A mysterious woman lies down behind a curtain, and Sarah identifies her from her laboured breathing as the unseen directoress of the school, who is supposedly travelling for the next month. A few days later, the school's blind pianist, Daniel, is fired by Miss Tanner after his seeing-eye dog bites Madame Blanc's nephew, Albert. As he leaves, he sort of says, I may be blind, but I've heard things. You mm. understand? I've heard things. Mm. That night, Daniel is stalked by an unseen force while walking through a plaza. Suddenly, his dog attacks and kills him by ripping out his throat. Sarah shares her suspicions of the teachers, whose footsteps suggest they leave the school at the same time every night, and shares that before her death, 
Pat had become paranoid that rich that witches ran the school. Susie remembers that before she ran, Pat uttered the words secret iris. In a stupor from her apparently drugged wine, Susie says that the teacher's footsteps seem to be going further into the building rather than leaving, and so Sarah follows them into the attic where she is accosted by a silhouetted figure who slashes at her with a razor. Sarah jumps through a window to escape, but falls into a pit of razor wire (laughs) where she becomes entangled until the figure returns and slits her throat. Well, well. The next day, Susie is concerned for Sarah's whereabouts and so contacts her friend, a psychiatrist. He reveals that the school was established by a Greek woman named Helena Marcos, Mm. who the locals believed was a witch. Marcos perished in a fire that destroyed most of the school. I'm sure she died in the fire. (laughs) One of Mandel's colleagues explains that a coven is unable to survive without its leader, a true witch and the source of its power. Yeah, cut off the head and the body dies. Yeah. Like a snake. Back at the school, Susie finds the other students are visiting the Bolshoi Ballet and so follows the footsteps to Madame Blanc's office where she finds a secret door behind a mural of three iris flowers. She discovers a secret passage leading to a gathering of a coven of witches headed by Madame Blanc. Blanc's nephew spots Susie and she is stalked by Pavlo into an adjacent room where she finds the exsanguinated body of Sarah and an adjoining bedroom. It's a good word. Yeah? Bedroom. Inside the bedroom, she hears the directoress is snoring and accidentally wakes her up. The directoress reveals herself to be the still living but invisible Helena Marcos <laughs> and taunts her that death is coming for her in the form of Sarah's reanimated corpse. Seeing lightning from outside reflect on Marcos's silhouette, Susie stabs her, killing her and revealing her decrepit body. The school begins to crumble around Susie, who watches as Madame Blanc, Miss Tanner and the rest of Marcus's coven perish along with her. She escapes into the rainy night and leaves smiling as the academy is consumed by fire. What is she so happy about, Chris? It's because she's sorted them witches out, isn't she, Joe? Where is she going to go now? What did you think of Suspiria? It was fine. But nowhere near as good as I hoped or expected it to be. Really? Based on what everyone was like, Joe, you have to see this. You call yourself a horror fan. You've never seen Suspiria. Terry, I watch into Suspiria. You've never seen it. You've had 41 years to see it. Exactly, yeah. I I won't show you what happens. Are you going spoiler free? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't think it can shake off its age, production values, bizarre. uh, Everything's bizarre. Yeah. Um. And I think if you strip away the colours and oppressive music and like the strange production decisions, mm. it's quite a mundane story. Okay. At its core. I think it's pretty unlike anything I've seen before in the horror genre. Because it's got such a unique style. Yeah, it's, the like, it's like a music video. Is, the colour is absolutely eye searing. By by it's like a music video. I mean it's like the video for um uh Go with the Flow by the Queens of the Stone Age. Right. Where it's just like, it's the like one where it's just washed out red and everything's right. coming towards you. Okay. And then they're coming towards you in a car. Possibly, that? yeah, yeah. And it's Winter just red, car. it's just like red wash, everything. Right. So yeah. And you're saying Suspiria has that same visual style. Suspiria is a very red film. They probably copied the Queens of the Stone Age. Didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of really interesting directorial choices that make the film, despite what you said, feel very confidently put together. Um, for example, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it's not confident put together. These aren't mistakes. They're just things that I didn't like. Because right. Like, okay. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, it shows its age. I, I think yeah. I would agree with that. Like Within about 20 minutes, I'm like, oh, I feel like I've got pins and needles for the soul sitting through this. Right. I just want it to be over. Okay. Like, it's just, I, it's unpleasant to watch. It's, really? It's, yeah. It's, it, the, the form reflects the function, right? It's meant to feel unpleasant and supernatural and weird. And it does okay. that. But I just didn't like it because I didn't want... I was probably in the wrong mood for it. Right. right? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, I, I, I was less... I, I understand all, all the stuff you're saying. And it it does feel like a film from the mid to late 70s that was made on a low budget. Yeah. There's, there's a number of, like, strange things. The... I mean, the soundtrack, which you mentioned, 
It's, it's by an Italian progressive rock band called Goblin, and it is just deafening. Like, yeah. every time it comes in, it's like... <laughs> Absolutely deafening. Um, I think there, there are some parts of it which are really, really well put together. For example, the introductory sequence when Susie Banyan arrives at the airport, the juxtaposition of images and things, you know, the way things are shot gives, gives this really surreal, tense build up, despite the fact that you're watching a woman walk out of an airport um, and like an automatic door open and a taxi door closing. Yeah. But despite all of that being really mundane, the way it's shot and the way it's edited and the soundtrack make it feel really unsettling. Yeah, and sinister. Yeah. And like the guy won't get out of the car to help her. Yeah, and it, there's just a lot of odd touches. Um, I, I'd agree that there, there are some flat, there are some very flat moments. For example, when Udo Kier um, turns up as the psychiatrist and just basically mm. you have 10 minutes of exposition dump uh, yeah, because it just feels very inelegant in a way that I think that the rest of the film doesn't. It's just sort of, if you hadn't guessed, here you go. Here's everything that you need to know about the film. Yeah, exactly. Which is like a, a a three or four minute scene of him just telling you the same shit that you, either you've worked out or you couldn't possibly work out. Yeah, which is not satisfying in the movie. No, I I agree. Um. Nice to see Udo Kier again. The Quiet Man, I think he was called, in uh, Brawl in Cell Block 99. Is that him? Yeah. Mm. The, you know, the weird guy that turns up at the uh, prison to... To finish the job? No, he's, he tells it is to tell him about his wife being in a situation. Anyway, yeah, he's in a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, one of those actors, I think. Um, he's also in American Animals, actually. The Be- He's the Belgian guy. Uh, in American Animals or the Dutch, Dutch guy. guy right Right, I know who you mean no, yeah. yeah yeah so he's just Mr. Pan-European basically. yes exactly ba- Pan-European baddie um, Suspiria is considered a giallo film Joe do you know what giallo is yeah, all about it's, it's not deep it's not deep it's shallow giallo right good how long have you been sat on that one I, first thing that came to my head when you said it, <laughs> okay. the Rorschach test for yeah, I think I I it's probably one of the f- most famous films that's considered a Jallo film, but yeah. it's not necessarily your typical Jallo. Tell film. me what tell me what a Jallo film is. So obviously I know. Really. Yeah, <laughs> but Jallo refers specifically to a particular Italian thriller horror genre that has many that has mystery or detective elements and often contains slasher, crime fiction, psychological horror, mm. psychological thriller, exploitation, sexploitation, and less frequently, supernatural horror elements. It seems to have all of those things. Yes. In Italy, the term generally denotes thrillers, typically of the crime fiction, mystery, and horror subgenres, regardless of the country of origin. Um and Dario Argento's an interesting chap. He has some pedigree before this film because mm. he worked with Sergio Leone on Once Upon a Time in the West and yeah. with George Romero as a producer on Dawn of the Dead. Okay. So he's already a, a cinematic, you know, involved in two big film. iconic yeah. uh, moments in cinema. Um, and he, he also... Uh, this is his first film? No, he had a few films before this... Uh, often featuring masked assailants, right. uh, women in peril, stabbings. Yeah. Um, Suspiria, though, became the first of a trilogy of films called The Three Mothers trilogy, yes. along with a film called Inferno and The Mother of Tears, the last of which was released in 2007, um, and they all deal with the supernatural to some extent. Um, Have and you seen I'll, any of this? No, I haven't. Uh, this is the first Argento film I've seen. Me too. Um, and he, it seems Argento has a genuine belief in the supernatural and the occult saying there's very little to joke about. It's just something that exists. <laughs> but if, if that's true, this isn't a documentary. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Do you, is it not? Wait, really? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, like, if that's true. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> 
Do you, I, I think I, Suspiria is a bit of a product of its production era. Um, I think in some ways. Yeah. The dubbing, one, is, pretty, the dubbing yeah. is, is very odd at first. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so, quite it's quite typical of Italian cinema of that era. Mm. Um, I, I kind of liked it. Once I got in tune with it, I kind of liked it because it really helps the film feel claustrophobic and surreal yeah. and otherworldly, although I think that's probably a happy accident, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but then if, if it's an accident and it works, it works. Like like the other things, the, the red and the, the, the zoom isn't smooth. That's one thing I did notice. It's like the... They need to oil the <laughs> right. the, uh, the lens. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because it's when it zooms, it sort of like shudders forward, mm. uh, which gets you know, like that's because they've not done something smoother. But then yeah. like, actually, well, it makes it weird. Mm. Right? Mm. The um, I don't know if you noticed, but with the dub lines, not all of them line up with the lip movements of the actors. Right. And that's because every actor was speaking in their native language. Right, okay. So some of them are speaking English, some of them are speaking Italian, some of them are speaking German. And they basically just sort of knew... Roughly what they Used their intuition mm. to know when it was time for their lines. Oh, fucking hell. Which must have just been bizarre. But the Italian films in this era just weren't filmed with sound. Really? Yeah, which is why everything's dubbed. So There's he, no like on set sound. So is that why spaghetti westerns so called because they're shot in Italy? Mm-hmm. Is that the same it's thing? Prob- probably because yeah. um, when we watched The Good, The Bad, and the Ugly, that mm-hmm. suffers from a similar problem where it's like everything looks like it's been dubbed in a studio. Yeah, which it probably has been. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, Suspiria, the most um, notable thing or the thing that it's lauded for most, known for most, is the colours. Uh, an Argento referenced Snow White, the Disney cartoon, uh, when he was discussing the visual style yeah. with the cinema cinematographer. When I saw the maggots falling from the ceiling, I thought, you know, this is a lot like the <laughs> Seven Dwarves song, right? Yeah. Um, he said uh, it's designed to emphasise vivid primary colours, particularly red, creating a deliberately unrealistic nightmarish setting, which I think it certainly achieved. Um, and I think it looks unlike anything else would you agree yeah it's, it's it's pretty crazy i mean it looks like the queens of stone age music video but <laughs> one bit that really made me laugh with the lighting is that when all the girls are sleeping in the dance hall mm. uh madame blanc says turn out the lights and they turn the lights yeah, out yeah. and it's replaced by a scorching red yeah. <laughs> light yes. that i suppose is supposed to denote this is night time yeah so does that mean that throughout the film, whenever it's like glaring red, it's just dark? I don't know. I don't because sometimes it's bright green as well yeah. in the middle of the night. It's crazy. It's it's bizarre. But what's the? Is there is there a consistency to it? Is there like a code? Could you be like hold up a key and be like, ah, oh, so this red means night. This red means there's a supernatural presence. Um, I mean, I don't know. Perhaps there's a reading of the film that um that mm. does that, but I, I I'm not aware of it. It's fair to say Suspiria has a bit of a cult status. Yes, so. I think so. Can you see why that's the case? I do and I don't. Like I say, like it's... You know when you're describing like what a um, Jalo movie is? Mm-hmm. That all sounds like it's a B movie, right? Right, yeah. Sex exploitation, exploitation. Exactly, yeah. It's a, and it does functionally, it's a B movie. It's a well-made B movie, mm-hmm. but it doesn't do much... To like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why it's. It so wouldn't f- be in your museum of film. I don't know. Like someone could make the case to me for it to be entered into the museum of film. I I, th- I can see why this has a cult status compared to something like Hellraiser, where yeah. I I just don't understand the yeah. It's just the hype for it. Yeah, but then um, you compare this to like Don't Look Now. Mm. They're similar in style, I think. I guess in some ways, yeah. Don't Look Now is a lot more grounded, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but then there are moments in that when it goes a bit mad. Mm. So I don't know. This is this is definitely a very hysterical film. I don't, it's like I say, it feels like an endurance test by the end of it. Right for me, I don't think I enjoyed watching it. Okay, but I don't, maybe you're not supposed to. I I, I did enjoy it. I personally I enjoyed it. Mm. I, it reminded me of something like Dawn of the Dead, um, in that it feels unlike anything that's being made in its era. Mm. It doesn't feel like a slasher movie. It doesn't feel like any of the sort of horror genres, the staples that are being made around the same yeah. time. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think stylistically and tonally, it's a really unique film, especially when you consider the era in which it was made. Um, I think it's obviously defining of a certain style and genre of film, you know, mm. the giallo. Um, I think it's, you know, um, influence or the audience that it's developed uh, since its release sort of helps maintain its cult status, if you see yeah. what I mean. Like, it, it it's... It's a cult film because it has a cult following. Yes. Um, I think there are certain things about it which are just unlike any other film, like the soundtrack and the way it uses the soundtrack. <laughs> which are just, I, th- I, think, I think, are fascinating. But I think you could say that about Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, but then I think... I, 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 I mean... Cannibal Holocaust is tricky because it does have those elements. And I mm. think there are some people to whom that is a cult film that's really worth, you know, worth yeah. something. But to us, it's that we don't, we can't get past the, the ethics of it. the ethics and the production elements yeah. of it, the which thing, this film doesn't have. Yeah. I've got uh, the 1001 movie to see before you die book. Mm-hmm. Cannibal Holocaust is not in it. Mm-hmm. This is. Yeah. And I, I read about, you know, doing the research for this movie I read a lot about how people have entered it into their top 100s and top 500 films ever or something. But I just don't understand what it has over other films. It's not... I don't know. Do you think it's just a budgetary thing? Like, Is that why there's issues in it? How do you mean? Like, what sort of issues do you mean? I, I'm i down with the mission. Right? I get what they're trying to... what he's trying to do. Why the colours are there. I understand, like, it is... It is unlike anything else. It is an experience to watch it because it's like, it's quite unlike anything you've ever seen before. Yeah. But that doesn't make a good film necessarily. No, I, I, know, I know what you're saying. I mean, I watched this in quite a good, you know, setup. It was the 40th anniversary Blu-ray that I watched. I watched it without another screen, you know, no laptop, no phone. Because um, I did want to sort of experience it. As you say, it's a bit of an experiential Mm. film um and and i feel like i got a lot out of it i don't it's not you know i know people for whom this is one of their favorite films and it's not gonna you know it's not a film that i'm gonna be going back to and watching again and again no even though you're in the 40th edition blu-ray yeah but i mean it wasn't it wasn't you a might huge come amount up, of money. Never know. lady sunday afternoon it, it was it wasn't on? yeah i mean it wasn't a huge amount of money and i i'm i'm glad that i bought it because i feel like i watched it in the best possible um yeah Maybe I watched it, I think, I had to, like, as soon as it finished, run to get to the gym. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, like, worried about, like, I need to get there. That wasn't adding to your ten- the feeling of tension in the film for you? No. <laughs> not <laughs> in a positive not. sense? No, I don't know. Um, so maybe I should have watched it after the gym. When I've been beaten into a like state of complete passiveness. I mean, that without context, that's a troubling statement for someone <laughs> to hear about you just going to the gym. My, my gym is an MMA gym. I should put for context. Yeah, you're um, getting into white collar boxing, basically. Aren't it's you? not boxing. It's, it's MMA. White collar boxing, right? Is a, is a different thing. White collar boxing is sorry. It's white collar MMA. It's not white collar MMA. It's, it's po- posh, uh, middle class. White people who fancy a scrap. That's not true. No, the, the thing is, right, it's not, is it? It's good for, to fight people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not convinced. Yeah, I've got, I'm Basically. sitting here with a black eye, and that's yeah. not a joke. Yeah, and that's because you've got need in the face Yeah, going to the gym. Yeah, but How many go- people go to the gym, like, every day? Yeah. Or how many of our listeners? There might be people listening to this podcast at the gym. If you are, well done, good yeah. for you. I dare say none of the people who have go- gone to the gym today would have been kneed in the face. Like you go to the gym yeah. to improve yourself, right? Yes. What do you feel like being kneed in the face has improved yourself? Yeah. Cause now I know I won't get, I won't do that again. So it's an experience to get knee yeah, in the face. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a learning curve. So it's an experiential uh, knee to the face. Yeah, I think so. Like I, the reason it happened... Do you feel like if you weren't in the right mood, that knee to the face, uh, you wouldn't have understood the knee to the face and why everyone loves talking about being knee in the face? I feel like I 
appreciate the knee in the face more than I appreciate the spirit. Okay. Wow. It's, it's, it's brought what would more you to rather, my life. What would you rather have again? Would you rather be kneed in the face again or would you rather watch the spirit again? It depends on the context. Am I like in a fight and training or are you just going to knee me in the face? Yeah, probably. But what, what's the choice? So wouldn't you well, say you, knee in the no, face? You, like... You, there was context to the knee. I wasn't just like sat there and someone need me. I was like yeah. wrestling. Right. So, well, did it hurt at the time? Yeah, obviously. I got knee in the face. Yeah. We well, would about? you rather have that experience again or watch Suspiria again? Suspiria was more prolonged, but less yeah. painful. So it's more like, it's like, what's the net pain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I didn't, I wasn't enamored with Suspiria. Let's okay. put it that way. All right. Well, Maybe like the next episode we do is the remake, which I did like. So okay, if I if I sound down on this, yeah, just wait till you hear me let loose about the remake. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the whole idea of remaking a film like this? Uh, I think it needed it. I was certainly thinking. You think it needed it? Yeah. Knees it was- again, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it it was- needed it in the face. Yeah, it needed it in the face. Um. Well, that's interesting because you're normally very much down on um, remakes in general. Is, is that fair? Yeah, generally speaking, if it's unnecessary. But it, like, if you can make the case for it, right? Mm-hmm. You can't really make a case for Jurassic Park to be remade. Yeah. Right? There's no logic to that other than money, right? Do you agree? Yeah. Like, and I, I, well, I, I, I mean, don't think artistically yeah. money isn't a real... Re- re- so you think the fact that it's aged is... Um, reason to remake it. I think it was never finished. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> I think that's unfair. I think it's it's like a singular vision, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but it's not one I like. And no, I but that's, s- that's that's fair enough. And yeah. I want to see the that retold through a prism, which I do like. Okay, and well, like, luckily you already have Luca Guad Guadagnino. 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 Yeah, uh, he is a good director whose movies I like, I enjoy, and it's interesting the the prospect of seeing him remake a film which. I didn't like, but I like the idea of. It's interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, I understand that. Like with Force Awakens, it's kind of like saying, like, what if J.J. Abrams have made A New Hope? Right. And you go, well, that's that's an interesting idea, right? Yeah, kind of. I, I, I yeah. Who's so, a, who's a director you really like? The Coen Brothers. So if the Coen Brothers announced that they were doing a remake of Suspiria, you'd be really excited, wouldn't you? Yeah, but that's, but. You've only seen one Guadagnino film before. And it was Which great. is Call Me By Your Name. It was a fucking great which, film. Yeah, it is. It's my favourite film of the year, probably. Yeah. But it's not, it bears very little resemblance to Suspiria. But he's a, he showed his hand as a good director. Right. And, and a, I suppose as someone who can adapt material. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas Luca... Um, Dario Argento, who's only proven himself to be a failure in my eyes... <laughs> One of the most beloved directors. <laughs> Who else do you like as a director? Lynn Ramsey. So Lynn Ramsey remakes Cannibal Holocaust. What do you say to that? I mean, is she going to murder animals for it? No, obviously well, not. Well, then I, I would obviously be more interested to see that than the original. Yeah, but that's how I feel about this. Right. So it's it's like Suspiria murdered an animal. It's like if... if who's a band you like? No, weird... I get the analogy like, that you're going. I get, no, I get no, what you're no, saying. No, no. <laughs> if Frost said they're doing a, a, a cover of like an, an album of covers, <laughs> and it's all covers of songs that I hate, yeah, yeah. I you... mean, it, it, I would listen to it, but the, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but the, the fact is that I understand what you're saying. Yes, I do. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I think it's appropriate to remake it from an artistic perspective. If the reason to remake something, so is your artistic. artistic reasoning for redoing it is I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the greatest works of art, <laughs> like yeah. considered to be a pinnacle of horror movie making yeah, because exactly. it's so artistic. Yeah, too artistic, <laughs> says Joe Gerbil. It should be I remade did- for artistic <laughs> reasons. <laughs> remake it and make it less artistic yeah did luca guadagnino make it less artistic <laughs> find out later today um in the companion podcast to this episode do you want to see the notes i made because the, the, it, the way it worked out i'd already written my predictions for what i think it would be right before seeing it does that make sense yeah before seeing the remake i wrote down i think this was what the remake will be like okay i expect it 
will only roughly follow the structure of the original. It will hit the same notes and will have embellishments in other places. I'm expecting a 7 out of 10, a good cover version, but unlikely to be entered into the Museum of Film on its own merit. Were you right? Find out in the podcast later. Mm. How would you survive this, though? Well, you remember Sarah, Joe? Sarah is the uh, busybody. Yeah, who goes up into the attic. And then is it with pins in her eyes? Uh, yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sum it up by saying, look before you leap. <laughs> and I know that you've had the same <laughs> yeah. thought. Uh, Sarah leaps from a window into an absolutely outrageously big pile of razor wire. Yeah. Which instantly... That must have been, like, so expensive to buy in. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I, like, incidentally, go... that features in previous Argento films. Really? But... we well, leaping into a pit of razor wire or that room. Or like, I think, a pit of razor wire. If I said to you, can you run down... You know, in, Appren- in The Apprentice, right? When yeah. they're, like... They get, like, a little task to go and buy something. Mm-hmm. If they were like, we need we need some razor wire, yeah, for a room. They'd be like, I wouldn't, like, know, I wouldn't know like, where to start. That'd be like yeah. thirty quid, they, and then they end up. Uh, my point it's is, filling, a room full of filling razor, a roof full of razor wire. Be so Why expensive. do they have it? Is it specifically for this reason, yeah. or do you think it's been conjured by? Oh, mate, man, you, you, every every ballet school has a razor wire yeah. room. What are you want about? Yeah, teach you to plie properly. Is that a ballet thing? Pirouette so. is one. Yeah, that's good. Good. Um, just maybe just don't lean, leap straight into it. How does she know? It? But she's, I think she's, I think what's happened, right, is it's like a, she has to jump it. It's a leap of faith because she's too high but, up to test it with her feet. She can't lean down. No, but she could hang down into it. Mm. Basically, if if going back isn't an option, right, and mm. you have to go through the razor wire. All I'm saying is there are probably better ways of going about it than, than diving leaping, head first. <laughs> like fully leaping into the middle of the room full yeah. of razor wire. But she didn't know it was there. But that's mental though, isn't it? Because there's absolutely no way she wouldn't know it's there. It's And also, what if there was a, like a chair there and she broke her leg on the chair? Leap before you leap makes sense because... Right, just in general. You, yeah, because I think it's dark, right? That's the point. Right, so you think that she just doesn't see it yeah, at all. Yeah, that, right. I think the problem is the movie has established it's, um, it is a dark it, by having a <laughs> eye-bleedingly bright red. Yeah. But so then when it's actually dark, you're like, it must who be the, daylight. Who know? Yeah, like you've lost all context for what is and isn't supposed to be yeah. dark. Why have they got this UV light on? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Well, good advice for anyone on a high ledge anyway is look before you leap yeah this is advice for the witches the coven yeah wear socks okay well this ties into something I was going to say as well it says this to disguise your footsteps yeah because they they get found by two different people Mm. from three different people same reason because they're clumping around in their fucking beetle crunches yeah thump like oh we're off everyone we're off into town to bed thump 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 door yeah. closes then thump 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 <laughs> thump 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 to the point where they can be like found exactly where they are yeah pinpointed yeah yeah i mean i i, I basically had the same idea but for Susie, which okay. is that take she should take her high heels off when she's sneaking places mm. because she has to run past a kitchen door right and very nearly gets caught she's a ballet she's dancer we're, we're, we're ballet shoes right yeah. it just where go barefoot yeah it would be good advice for both of them really wouldn't it yes yeah I mean it's totally obvious there's no need for her to even be wearing high heels no everyone criticised Jurassic World when Bryce Dallas Howard's character yeah. is clomping about in stiletto okay. heels I, I fear that um, this is an example of Susie being a, a slave to the stylistic mores of uh, Dario Argento yeah maybe yeah that's why I need to be remade yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's. I feel like it's a scene that it doesn't really make sense what she's doing or how she's doing it. It's just whether or not she looks good doing it. Do you think so? Yeah, I think I think that's probably what. Not necessarily in a in a sexual way. I just mean in a stylistic way. Yeah, butt kicking. Butt kicking. Yeah, she's butt kicking. She's cool. She's playing it cool. Here she comes. Can you good. watch this bit? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? There's Jurassic World. <laughs> Um, my final point mm-hmm. is for, I guess the butler, Pavlo. Yeah. 
Um, he dies at the end. Yeah. And it's all because I think he is just weird and can't... How does he die again? I think he just dies in the fire, right. I guess, right? My point is he can't... I can't give him tips unless he's dead, really. But go for cleaner kills. Because when the first girl, Pat, is, like, looking out the window, he... What the, where the fuck is he? Because his hand comes through is the, that the second story. It must be. I don't think how... Else, it was a man's hand. Well, yeah, it um, it comes through a, an upstairs window. Yeah, I I believe it's which is magic, Joe. And then some eyes appear from darkness, which yeah. are yellow as well. That's true, like a cat. Anyway, my point is, how the fuck did he get up there, and why didn't he just knock the door? If you've got a knife and you're willing to just stick it through someone's head, or whatever, like cut their heart out, or whatever he did, yeah, why don't you just do that at the doorstep? Why have you got to do it in the on the roof? So clean a kill. What, how does that help him survive? Because th- it's less suspicious. Yeah. If you covered up the deaths better. Yeah. Yeah. Why did they kill her? She found out the secret. She knew too much. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I've got uh, I've got one more idea. Go on. Just um, hide your hidden doors a bit better. Yeah. Uh, this is one for the coven, uh, in okay. case you hadn't guessed. Uh, I think maybe when... The door was installed. It might have been less obvious, mm. but the second they show the wall that's got a hidden door in, mm. it's completely obvious where the door is. Right, like on camera. I, I think it just needs a lick of paint. You know, it just yeah, needs yeah, a little yeah. bit of tidying up, a bit right? Of filler. Yeah, because it is just. Um, it's. It, I mean, it's like you've got a picture of a a, a wall that's mm. got a mural on it. And there's like a, <laughs> a rectangle <laughs> that's exactly door shaped. Yeah. Um, and also, just why why make such a big thing of the mechanism to open it? Why why have the irises there? You can lock. Yeah. Just anything. Just anything. Just don't have anything there. Locked door. Just a have one of those door. doors that you like push, and it opens. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you'd you would push push it in, and it would open outwards. Anything like that. Um, you went to school. We and went to the yeah. same school. Yeah. There were some doors where it says no entry to students. Right. Just put one of them on. Yeah. The I sticker mean, says don't I th- come in. I think entry. if you're... Staff only. If you were suspicious that people at our school were witches, would you have ignored those signals? Um, I would be less suspicious that they were witches if there was a sticker that said staff only compared with if they had a... Like a convoluted hidden, mechanism. Right, that yeah. I, yeah. So just label it staff room or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Like I never, I never suspected that the science block had, um, like witches, witches, a witches coven. I it. assumed they were doing they had chemicals in there, right. and students weren't allowed in there. Yeah, for that reason, yeah. maybe I'm an idiot. Yeah, maybe, maybe they, it was witches. Yeah, exactly. Long. Maybe that's that, mate. Yeah, well, Dario Argento's classic Suspiria, rated by Joe as the first film he's ever seen that is should be remade <laughs> <laughs> because it's too arty yes exactly i haven't got any emails or tweets uh just now because of course there is another episode coming today mm. same day this one is released talking about luca guadagnino's 2018 suspiria mm. um so that will be coming out later uh, if you're skipping that one then we'll see you next week for darren aronofsky's bl- bl- Darren Aronofsky's brilliant Black Swan mm. to round off ballet season. Yeah, I think um, leave a review anyway, though, between yes, between yeah. tracks. Yeah, yeah. If you've enjoyed this, if you've enjoyed Joe's lukewarm reaction to Suspiria, <laughs> then leave a five star review. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to swap roles for the next one. I suspect you're going to be a bit lukewarm about the possibly, sequel. Possibly. Possibly. Sequel? You'll have to listen Remake to find one? out. Mm. Until then, goodbye.